Certain death. Yes, it's certain death if they bring 5 million radical jihadis into Europe, 80% of them military age men. It's certain death to bring hundreds of thousands in. They've been uh, playing down the numbers. It's in the hundreds of thousands. It's in the tens of thousands here in Austin, Texas, we've confirmed in the last year of, quote, Syrian uh, refugees. That's radical jihadi invaders who went into Syria, got their butt kicked, and they made a deal with Turkey to move into Europe with Merkel and uh, the head of the EU migrancy program, who, of course, has been meeting at the Bilderberg meeting in the last week, Peter Sutherland. We have reached total, absolute, information overload today with the amount of information we're going to be breaking down obviously we've got 55 people dead now uh and more than 60 or so injured in the orlando nightclub that was reportedly a a a, a gay nightclub i have been harping on the fact that china executes gays that 11 muslim countries execute gays and all I hear is carping and screaming and yelling from the LGBT so-called community, an offshoot of the Democratic Party, that that's a lie and that I am being homophobic or Islamophobic and that the poor little jihadis aren't targeting you. That is how totally over-the-top insane all of this has gotten. This morning I got up and ISIS had already officially claimed responsibility. This gentleman was uh, openly claiming responsibility, and he had been watched for two years. They knew he was about to do it, but were ordered to stand down, just like San Bernardino. And it took until later in the afternoon, eight, nine hours after everybody gotten up and, and, and you know knew about this horror, for the media to go, okay, it's Islamic terror. But Obama wouldn't say that. He said it's an attack on us all because an attack on a gay nightclub is just the heart of everything. So, so it's an attack on us all. And, and, and my issue is I hate any group of people being attacked, period. But now we're going to hear the grandstanding and the LGBT training of the, of the kids in school. And America did this. And this is part of the hate. This guy killed more homosexuals than every gay basher has done in the U.S. the last 50 plus years. I mean, there might be one death a year and they act like it's the end of the world. Anybody else gets mugged and killed. It's not even in the newspaper, hardly. But it becomes this giant cause celeb, end of the world. You get 50 plus people dead at a gay nightclub and it's a jihadi doing it and it's an ISIS operation that they called for three days before and said they were gonna hit Florida. They have released this electronic press release that they're gonna hit thousands of different groups and thousands of different people. They released that last Monday and now it's the month of Ramadan, and that's when you've got to go on high alert. I had Tim Kennedy here yesterday. Again, 15 years of special forces, specifically assigned to domestic operations. And he doesn't tell me this, but I already, already know this. He, he said, yeah, well, that's true. Anti-terrorism operations in the U.S. at the highest levels. And they all knew this was coming in the month of Ramadan. And what you're seeing is the beginning of a sneak attack Tet Offensive. Just like the Chinese New Year in Vietnam, that famous attack when it's supposedly a ceasefire. This is the beginning. You notice the attacks are coming at shorter and shorter intervals and are more intense. This is probing. This is getting ready. And, this, and, and then as they put the orders out, there's no cell organization. It's just camp, camp followers and, 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 and people that go along with the ideology. These lone wolves will start activating. Then the globalist will invert logic. The very ones that allow this to happen will tell us by giving up our freedoms, they will protect us and they will take our guns with the California ruling, federal court ruling, to take your guns last week. It isn't about shooting our horn. Quite frankly, I got tears of rage in my eyes this morning when I got up at about 8.30, slept late on Sunday, usually up about 6 a.m., and I went into the kitchen and my cell phone that was plugged into the wall was just full of probably a hundred texts from Joe Biggs and Rob Dew and my reporters wanting to you know hear what they should do next. And I, and I love the fact that because I was asleep and they didn't uh, couldn't get a hold of me, they just went ahead and did the right thing. And Biggs bought tickets and flew to Florida, and uh, you know Rob Dew went ahead and you know, went into motion, started doing his job. But it's not it's not tooting my horn when I tell you that you can go to Google. And you can type in ISIS cells being activated, prepare for attack two weeks ago with Tim Kennedy, expert in anti-terrorism, 
U.S. Army. And all of our other guests coming on. And myself saying clearly they're preparing a massive Tet offensive, a Tet 2. Uh, Brecker, the former Navy SEAL, had him on twice for three hours total. Saying it's imminent, it's coming, get ready this summer, get ready during Ramadan for the kickoff. There are attacks in Europe. There, there have been other attempted copycat attacks. They found another guy with uh, automatic weapons and the rest of it going after a gay pride parade out in California. We have 50 plus people dead. We have another 60 or so seriously injured. We have a liberal Democrat registered son of Afghan immigrants, an admitted disciple of ISIS, who pledged allegiance to them online two years ago. Driving down from New York, where he was a security guard, and going in there and killing those people. He had a New York gun license. He was a security guard, just like these airports Charles de Gaulle in France, where more than half the people working there are Muslims, and most of them are women wearing hijabs, and their faces covered or full burkas. You got the foxes watching the hen house here, and political correctness is so over the top. They are on the news right now saying enough is enough. This is the fault of the Second Amendment. They are on the news right now heralding the federal ruling last week that they can restrict guns and the open carry of guns, they are on the news right now saying this is a hate crime. And I've even talked to people I know that are buying it going, yeah, this is more of a hate crime because it was gays. Who do you think Muslims target? 11 Muslim countries execute gay men or lesbian women. Islamic State all over the Middle East from Libya to Egypt to Syria, when they get control, they throw people off buildings is the customary way to kill a homosexual. I literally don't dislike anybody, I'm a libertarian. I get to hear all day because I'm a nationalist and pro second amendment that I hate gay people. That's how the left makes themselves cause celebs and victims and oh, look at me. What I hate is all the fake flamboyant, you're gonna run society, you're gonna tell our five year olds how to live because you know they need some LGBT training because you know there's so much homophobia in the West where you can live in peace and be left alone and not killed. And then you got the very same left allied with radical Islam in the belly of the West that has given them all this freedom and they're desecrating it, they're spitting on it. But I'm talking about the LGBT crowd that the media speaks for and that speaks for everybody else, and that just sits up there and shoots their mouth off all day, uh, you know, about how they control the culture. It's a bunch of bullies who bring in even worse bullies. And are just running around murdering people in mass. And so I charge the left. And I charge Obama. And I charge the LGBT community in general with endangering America and with the blood of these 50 plus innocent men and women who did not deserve to die, who did not deserve to have bullets fired into them. And all the other hundreds of thousands of other liberals and gays and others in the Middle East that have been murdered the last five years under the Al-Qaeda slash ISIS onslaught that our government and CNN has pushed and said is a good thing, the Arab Spring run by Saudi Arabia and the West to bring down the entire Middle East. You people, bring down the Middle East. You put the radicals in charge that sexually mutilate women. You give them the weapons. You give them the know-how. Turkey and NATO aid them. You attack all these countries. They let them into Europe. They let them into Macedonia. They let them into Turkey and the rest of Europe. And they open the borders up and say, you must accept them. We must ban German freedom. We must ban uh, Swedish freedom. We must arrest anybody criticizing the open border, including presidential candidates Marie Le Pen. That's not even as hardcore as Donald Trump. Arrested her for saying this Islamic invasion is as bad as Hitler's invasion. They arrested her. Their answer to the radical Islam is we have to give up our speech or they're going to attack us. That's why the left allies itself, the totalitarian left, the fascist left, with radical Islam. <sighs> then there's an imam in Orlando, we got video, shooting his mouth off, 
saying that basically the gays deserved this to happen to them. Man, if a conservative said that, they'd get lynched. And he's up there in his black robes with his turban on. Death is the sentence. We know there's nothing to be embarrassed about this. Death is the sentence. News 9. They say, go kill the homosexuals. The guy goes and does it, and you want my guns. And you'll use it to say, oh, there's this, all these crimes against gay people. Let us educate your kids so you would sexualize my children and indoctrinate them into your cult. And I'm not saying you're in a cult because you're gay. I'm talking about the gay mafia that's really a pedophile mafia in Hollywood and the rest of it that wants access to our kids. And I'll tell you, I don't know who's worse, the pedophile mafia or radical Islam. But you know what? Radical Islam, they have sex with little kids anyways. That, that sex is legal. Oh, you can have, the Quran says, have sex with little boys all day long. Just don't have sex with men with men. I mean, what a freak show, man. So I guess that form of Islam, Orthodox Islam, I guess that is worse than the pedophile cult. So there you go. Because you're just out in the open with it. I mean, I mean, it's it just, you actually start reading the Quran and the Hadith and all this stuff. It is mind-blowing. And I've bought copies from official Islamic publications. Official, certified Sunni text. And it is freak show, folks. Freak show. There's a headline, Daily Caller, anti-pedophilia bill rejected in Pakistan as anti-Islamic. Boom! Wow. So no wonder the radical left's allied with Islam. They're just a bunch of perverts. They want access to our kids. To bring, they want to sexually mutilate our women and put and put hoods over their heads. No, you're not going to do it. So coming up, I've got the imam shooting his mouth off. I got it all. And then I've got all the stop the violence hashtags out this morning. Oh, oh, really? Turn the guns in so that only the radical jihadis have the weapons? They got gun control in a bunch of these countries. Does that stop the radical jihadists? What about Europe? Did that stop all the gun bans in Paris? There's no guns in Paris. Oh, but the jihadis got their guns in because the government let them come in because the government lets these attacks take place to then take the general public's basic freedoms. So here's the battle, folks. There's going to be more sleeper cell attacks on schools and nightclubs and facilities like that and in military recruiting centers where they're not allowed to have weapons and military bases where they can't have weapons. That's an oxymoron. There's going to be more attacks and then get ready. Gun owners and libertarians and veterans are going to be blamed. That is the inverted universe. That is the twisted universe. And then they got a bunch of lesbians on there tweeting girls kissing, going, love's going to win, we're going to get your guns. Nothing about Islam. Nothing about countries where they'd kill you the first day you were on the street. Zero. Because, see, these, these social justice warriors are a bunch of wimps. They want to come into the lap of true open society and freedom and run around bitching at everyone that's done nothing to them and then ally with a bunch of slavers. I mean, go read. You know, Muhammad was a slaver, folks, a white man that enslaved black people. So, of course, Muhammad Ali changed his name from that of an abolitionist to that of a slave master. I have reached overload points. I'm going to have to just sit back and calm down for just a moment. I have confirmed from high-level sources that there are six cells in six cities preparing to attack homosexual targets. That's what ISIS normally does when it rolls out first uh, to, to quote, get the general Islamic support is target the group that in Islam they all completely agree deserves to die, and that's any full-grown men or full-grown women having sex together. Children, it's, it's super A-OK -okay and totally wonderful. And I was just showing mainstream news articles. ISIS kill list targets Palm Beach, Treasure Coast, residents, ex-FBI agent. Now, let me give you high-level intel. We're going to bring Tim Kennedy in here and, and see if he's gotten the same info. But this comes directly from the Pentagon. What you're about to hear. In fact, let's get Kurt Nemo, who I know is on this weekend, is one of our writers. I know he's probably listening. Uh, Kurt, get ready to write this. This is a big story. You're hearing it here. Six cities. In the next segment, I'll tell you the names. Obviously, Orlando and L.A. were two, are currently being targeted by cells that have now been activated, and there are anti-terrorism units moving into those areas right now to go after the people inside the United States. Now, I want to be very, very clear about this with everybody, okay? I see on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com 
a lot of comments saying, what is this, the Fox News channel with this fear-mongering? It isn't fear-mongering if it's real. When we attacked Iraq, when it was Saudi Arabia involved heavily, that was wrong. I was against it. It was meant to stir up the Middle East. Dick Cheney wrote the PNAC document talking about it. Now, they've gone past the class of civilizations. The globalists and NATO are just allying with Islam now to overrun us. The world changes. Alliances change. Saudi Arabia is our mortal enemy. I've always exposed them. I haven't changed. People aren't sophisticated enough to understand something that's 2 plus 2 equals 4 if they don't get this. There are real radical Muslims. There's over a billion and a half Muslims total. Wahhabism has taken over Islam. It is seen as the orthodox Islam now. It is super hardcore and crazy. It puts five-year-old girls in sex slavery, for heaven's sakes, okay? It's totally schizophrenic. A, a man can have sex with a 10-year-old boy, but he can't have sex with another man. It's crazy. It's devilish. They brought five million into Europe. They brought hundreds of thousands in here. It's way higher than what they're saying. We've proven that right here in Austin, and they're going to allow them to attack. And they're going to bring in civil emergency for the election unless we stop it. There are good elements of the government trying to stop it. The Pentagon and the Army particularly now understands the full plan and has been trying to block it for four years with the Russians. I told you that four years ago, three months ago, Cy Hirsch came on, Pulitzer Prize winner, and said, yes, Alex, thank you for your work. It's been groundbreaking with your guests. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we know what we're talking about. It's true. For four years, the Pentagon has refused to work with ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Syria and has been aiding the Russians with satellite data to help take them out. Our military said no to Obama because he's not the president. He is a globalist, Wahhabist, and I used to hear this not believe it. It's true. I knew they were manipulating Islam, and he was acting like he was for it. And I, I knew he went to mosque when he was a kid in Indonesia, and I, and I knew he could speak perfect, you know, uh, Pashtun and all the rest of it. And people were blown away in, in Cairo in his first speech. But man, Napoleon joined Islam at the end. These double crosses and triple crosses have happened before. And all I know is they brought 5 million people in the last three years into Europe. 80% of military-age men, that's Interpol. And a lot of them jihadis. Folks, 10,000 men, a 10,000-man sleeper cell. Can you imagine 10,000 guys with guns going out and attacking nightclubs and schools and everything else? I mean, we're talking 5 million in Europe. Let's just say 10,000 attack. What about here? There are no-go zones all over Europe where our crew gets physically attacked and run out. And they say that they say that Donald Trump's a liar and, and, and that San Bernardino wasn't a terror attack. The FBI came out and admitted they were ordered to stand down and to say that 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 wasn't terror for two days and then a year and a half before they tried to stop them those very two they were going back and forth to pakistan and to saudi arabia and were ordered to stand down and a criminal investigation was started by the obama justice department and eric holder against the two agents they faced criminal charges if the panel found that they were being racist against the very people that went in there and shot all those folks so, people say, Alex, you know, you say a lot of terrorists false flag. Yes, it's false flag to, for NORAD to stand down. It's false flag to give the terrorists uh, visas. And I've interviewed the heads of the embassies and all of it. There are criminal elements working with radical Islam in our government. But it is a false flag in that our governments of Europe and the United States are bringing in record numbers in the fake liberal pretty boy up in Canada, Trudeau. They're bringing them all in, and when they attack, they come out and say, it's your fault. It's your granddaddy's fault wearing the John Deere hat with his rifle. It's your fault, the veteran, the gun owner, the patriot of every race, color, and creed. They're putting the guilt on us, the outrage, the, the, the arrogance, the insolence of these people. And then they have an imam in Orlando on TV saying the gays deserve this. It is written we must kill them. And it is written you must kill them. I mean... This is so crazy. This, this is so out of control and so mentally ill. But this is how America falls. They bring these people in. They let them attack. Then they declare civil emergency and say, you're not allowed to talk like you are anymore. You stirred up the Muslims. I said that before Merkel did it, before Halan did it in Europe. They've done it. And I told you this was coming, and now this would happen. And you could see that the attacks are becoming more frequent and more intense. 
Tim Kennedy was in here a few months ago. You guys, if you pull up the Army Times, I want to show TV viewers. Just type in uh, Tim Kennedy, ISIS Click News. It's Army Times. But he broke it here. He's a fellow Austin tonight, friend of mine, good friend of mine. And we were just sitting there talking about it, how ISIS says he's a target and they're coming after him. They released Monday thousands of targets inside the United States in this electronic hacker brigade they have that they're going to hit. Let me tell you why this is such a bold, insane move. They think logic's dead. The globalists that have allowed this to take place, they think they're going to bring all these people in here. They're going to attack us, and then they're going to try to spin it into a hate crime and act like we did it. Because the wife of the other guy, he wasn't from here, but he lived here while he was a citizen. She wasn't a citizen yet in San Bernardino. This guy's parents came here in the 80s, and he was just a total, complete whack jog. And there's all this, this hype, attack, attack, attack. These aren't even cell groups, these terror groups. They are just an ideology like, like fire ants. They climb up your leg, they release a pheromone, 20, 30 of them, and they all start stinging at once. Son of honeybees. Honeybees will release a pheromone that says you're bad and then attack you. So they don't get orders from headquarters. ISIS puts out videos of how to do stuff and says, you know, home gardening or how to brew beer at home. You know, that's what I go and, you know, do online. Or, you know, how to, how, to, how, you know, how to fix a carburetor. No, no. Or, you know, where's the best place to hike when I go to Colorado? No, no, they don't do Or where's the best enchiladas? Where's the best fried chicken on Sunday? That's the kind of stuff I go. Oh, no, no, not them. It's let me go see how to dump chlorine gas on a 100-story building. That kind of stuff. Kill everybody inside of it. And they're all just waiting, all just waiting, and all just a trigger. And once one fire ant stings, they all start firing at once. Boom, 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 boom. The controlled demolition of the Republic. The door wide open to a jihad army. Well, I tell you, I have been really upset and angry today because we've had all these expert guests on. I could sit there and read the newspaper like anybody else could. They bring in millions and millions of radical Muslims, 80% of them military age men. They bring in hundreds of thousands here, suppress the numbers. They cover up the Fort Hood shooting that killed 13 people. Don't call it terror. San Bernardino, don't call it terror. Army, Navy, Marine Corps uh, shootings, they, they cover it up. Garland, they try to cover it up. It just, cop getting shot in Philadelphia. Jihad, jihad, the guy's you know, wearing the white nightgown, shoots him. Uh, nightclub gets attacked up in Toronto. They covered that up. All these attacks across Europe. There were dozens of attacks in France after the uh, Charlie Hebdo attack that they kind of swept under the rug. There were a bunch of attacks that night after the uh, attack at the other nightclub. So this is all going on. And then I just two weeks ago, we've, we've got the clip. I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play it tomorrow during the weekday show. Tim Kennedy, you know, headlines, top special forces soldier, ISIS sleeper cells now in the U.S. preparing to activate. That was the headline. I mean, he was in here this week talking about it. So, but, but everybody's talking about it. And then the attack happens and Obama comes out and says, this is a hate crime. And it's, oh, it's a thing. Well, yeah, Islam throws gays off cliffs. We were talking about that two weeks ago when he was here. They murder people and it's not compatible. So what is the government thinking? But then I have the information. We just showed it uh, from the Associated Press. FBI agent says that... This is just the beginning that there are other sleeper cells. Well, that's my sources. Um, and, of course, the Pentagon's been saying this as well. The CIA came out a few weeks ago and said that there are sleeper cells. But they're saying that there are major targets in different areas of the United States. Orlando was one. L.A. was one where they just caught some guy trying to do this. Uh, San Fran, New York, Boston, and Miami. And so Tim Kennedy obviously has been involved in a lot of uh, high-level anti-terrorism operations, 15 years in special forces, currently does some of that, but that's all super secret. He's also one of the hosts of hit show Hunting Hitler and the top UFC fighter as well, uh, and one of the top snipers in the world, and a fellow Austinite and good buddies with my uh, good friend Shane Steiner. So here he is in the info war. Uh, glad to have you here with us, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm all wound up with this imam saying, you know, in Orlando, the gays, you know, deserve to die. Uh, people saying, you know, attacking Trump, saying this isn't Islamic. Tim, what do you make of all this and where this is all going? You heard me go over some of my sources. Is that accurate from what you've heard? If you can speak about it. Uh, that's 100% accurate. You know, it's, this is one of those things, you know, we were talking about this like two weeks ago. This is one of those moments where I did not want to be right about this. You know, I, I didn't want to be right about killing of more Americans. Now, you know, a tragic part is that the, the LGBT group has kind of had been brushing elbows with Muslims saying, hey, we're both being persecuted. You know, like we can be pals about this. 
there, I promise, there is no friendship from the Islam community towards the lay, the, the gays, lesbians, bisexuals, they don't, they don't care. They want them gone. They're going to throw them off roofs. It's in their book, Quran chapter 7, verse 80 to 84. It says, kill Muslims. Or to kill to kill gays. That's what they want. That's what they do. You're having a Freudian slip there. Yeah. <laughs> the imams preach it. It's in their book, and that community needs to wake up. LGBT, wake up. We talked about that two weeks ago. The, the videos on Infowars. Uh, I think the headline was Muslims throw gays off buildings. You, you've been over there. You've seen it. They're doing it all over. Why is there this leftist love of Islam? That awkward silence is because I have no idea. Besides, it's another opportunity to destroy our country. That's why. You know, if if you're going to find a group that wants to destroy everything about America, that we, that we, you, Alex, and I, and all the other patriots love, Islam hates. They, 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 don't, they don't like tolerance. They don't like for you to have freedom of religion, sexual preference. They don't want any of that. You and the authoritarian left can't take over America because despite its problems, it's better than anything else. The engine of free market, they can't compete against it. They just want to blow it all up politically, bring in other allies because then they think they'll rule it. Their one chance, you know? What horrible, despicable people. Don't they understand that radical Islam or mainline Islam wants to kill them? We, can't, we cannot... We, we, can't, we can't say radical Islam anymore. It's a disservice. It is Islam. It is. You know, like... I get it. You're going to call me a bigot. You're going to say I'm racist. At this point now, how many how, how many attacks later? How, how many has there been? 20, 30, 40, 50? And they can't cover them all up? They can't. 50, you know, 50 someone people died last night. San Bernardino, countless. Paris, countless. Cologne, Germany, countless. Berlin, stonings. You know, not, not, we're not even talking Syria, Iraq. Not to mention all the radical Muslims running around or Muslims raping all the women. Okay, this man in Orlando, he comes from a moderate Muslim family. There's nothing radical about him. There wasn't. The FBI looked at him 13. Yeah, let's 14. put this guy on screen and play some of the gunshots in the background for we TV what, viewers. We don't know what happened in 15. You know, maybe he was radicalized or whatever that 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 could mean. No, it, it is the moderate Muslim community not not keeping track of their own. I have worked with some of the most remarkable Muslims ever. Translators in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan that have been truly courageous humans and they fought because they knew what terrorism was and they knew the difference listen to every single muslim that's listening to this your religion is going to die in the next 10 years if you guys don't start controlling these people i believe in freedom of religion as does alex as does every barrel-chested american but your religion is going to die because you're letting it die because you're letting the extremists win, and that is what is happening. Well, I totally agree. Even Louis Farrakhan, I went and interviewed him. He said, no, Islam needs a reformation. It's failed. And he admitted that he gets that he used to shoot his mouth off some about violence and things. Now he gets th this is going to create a conflagration, and I'm telling you, Islam isn't going to be left standing at the end of it. No. no it, we, when you, we, violence spawns violence. You know, you, you can, and let's face it, nobody does it better than the West once we get done, going. It just blows my mind. You're, you're picking a fight with people that dropped, the only group of people that dropped nu nuclear bombs on somebody else? That was us. Yeah. You come and attack us at Pearl Harbor, we're going to level your cities. We're going to climb cliffs. We're going to come on your beaches. We're going to halo from the sky. This is the greatest fighting force on the planet, and you're about to piss us off. And it's the American culture that came out of a thousand years of war on the continent, Europe, and then here. They just don't get it. No. Yeah. You're not going to beat us that way. You're going to piss us off. You know, like, now, now you're, there, there, there is an element to the American spirit that we're going to take care of our weak, that we're going to take care of those that can't take care of themselves. You know, it, it's in me. That's what justice is, right? We're going to. But they play that off on us and then just say, well, now accept us and let us put hoods on women's heads. And you're going to have to, oh, you shot that video with us Friday for the news that was powerful about, you know, Ramadan means you have to give up your freedom. And you use just a few examples of, you know, white versus serving alcohol. So, you know, a Muslim on Ramadan spikes her head day one into a table. And they said, oh, give us more examples. What do you mean? There's tens of thousands of examples where they want us to conform to them and it's wrong. You know, under Ramadan, okay, they're not supposed to have alcohol, right? They're not supposed to um, be eating meat. They're supposed to fast during the day. They're not supposed to partake in any sexual activity. Um, they're not supposed to fight. Last night... We had what is a Muslim that went and killed 
50 something people. Why do they tend to attack so much during Ramadan? <laughs> even, they're not supposed to. even though they're not supposed to fight? Because it's not considered fighting because they're killing what they've been told to kill. It's infidels. In, infidels. It's not, it's not against, it's not a sin. It's encouraged. It's, in, it's, it's actually like a pat on the back. Good job. Even though this is a time for reflection and peace, you'd have killed some infidels. I want to play a clip of this before we go to break and then come back and go through all the details of this and talk about more targets. Um, but, but let's play this imam. This is in Orlando. This is up on Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com as well. Tim Kennedy's here with us. Iman, speaking in Orlando, said gays must be killed out of compassion. Uh, here's that clip. Death is the sentence. I mean, look, there's nothing to be embarrassed about this. That death is the sentence. But we have to have that compassion for people. With homosexual, it's the same. Oof. Out of compassion, let's get rid of him now. Out of compassion, we kill him. He's so slimy, too, so creepy. I don't want that guy anywhere near my daughters. I don't want the guy on the face of the planet. <laughs> Not near my daughters. That's because you're a homophobe. You don't want him to kill the gays, so you're the bad one. See, that's what I don't get. The left hates us because we don't want to kill them. I, I want to save them. <laughs> you know, this, this, is, this is your chance. You know, if you're part of the LGBT community, Rally together and realize this is going to be the fight for your life. Not against conservatives, not against the GOP, against radical Islam. Absolutely right. You, just come on, people. Come up for oxygen. We'll be right back. All right, I'm going to try to slow down here and go over everything with Tim Kennedy. He's riding shotgun with us at the bottom of the next hour, maybe longer. We're going to have a Rob Dew from Europe over there covering Bilderberg, the very group that opened the borders, destabilized the Middle East, brought in the Islamicist. This is part of an admitted destabilization program. Tim Kennedy's been here three times the last month. Warning of exactly this. In fact, tomorrow we'll have more of the crew in to actually go get those clips with all these predictions now coming true. So during that three-minute break, we covered a lot of key stuff that should be on air. Uh, let's start with the nature of the targets they hit, um, the frequency uh, getting uh, faster, the attacks being more intense. The FBI, we know, was ordered to San Bernardino to stand down. Uh, to not go after these folks two years before. Same thing with this guy. Uh, so, so, Tim Kennedy, I know you can't get into classified stuff, but you do anti-terrorism stuff, not just overseas, but obviously domestically. We'll just uh, leave it at that. With your best expertise, there probably is out there. Um, let's walk through why they hit this target, what's coming next. You know, f first, we're, we're looking at who they're going after. They're, they're going after somebody that was fundamentally against their religion. That was the lesbian, gay transvestite community. They're like, eh, we don't like them. We're looking for uh, any way to kill somebody that doesn't align with us, um, our theology. And groveling to them didn't mean anything. Nope. Even though the LGBT community has been supporting uh, the, the Muslim call for uh, you know, the racism and the prejudice, like, hey, we, we have a similar cause. It's not the case. They specifically targeted you, and they're going to continue to do that just like they were in L.A. So first was who they're going after. It was the LGBT. Second was the location. It's a soft target. They're cowards. They are complete, gutless, impotent worms. And they're never going to go after you. They're not going to go after me. You know, we're, we're here in Texas, right? We, we have our houses that have elements of security that we're not going to talk about. They're going, at, they're going to a place that no guns are allowed. They know that at a bar in the United States, a business that primarily sells alcohol, you're not allowed to have a firearm. So it is a gun-free zone. That's what Pulse is. The and he was a registered Democrat with a New York firearms license as a security guard. So he went through all the hoops. Yep, he followed the law perfectly. They want to pass more laws. No, they don't, they don't follow the law. He broke the law by going to a nightclub with a gun where there were no other guns to stop him. What stopped the guy with a gun? Dudes with guns. In, 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 in uh, outside Dallas and Garland. Keep going. And same here. The, 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 the way that we stopped this shooter was we shot him. He was going to keep shooting people. It wouldn't have been 50. It wouldn't have been 100. It would have been 200 or 300 had he not had a bullet go through his body. This guy is such a demon. So continuing, getting into the, you heard me list those cities they say are the next targets, what's being deployed. So it, fortunately, they're not the smartest people. When they're recruited, ISIS is recruiting the weak, the unintelligent, the impoverished, uh, the people that they can actually plant seeds in fertile soil that they can... Um, try to convert into radical Islam. And uh, so the, the level of sophistication, uh, so this guy had a bomb vest, couldn't even use it. You know, the, um, he wished he could have, you know, instead of it being 50, it would have been a few hundred when he finally ran out of bullets. But 
L.A., they're trying to do the same thing, just like they're going to try to do in San Francisco, just like they're going to try to do in New York, just like they're going to try to do in Boston, just like they're going to try to do in Miami. But it's a very decentralized uh, kind of indirect form of control. So what you do is you identify somebody that is radical enough, extreme enough to go kill somebody else. And once they identify that person, then they empower them. They try to connect them with an imam that can give them the tools or the little bit of maybe like the push off the cliff. The spiritual backing. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it spiritual backing, but really it's... The brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ideological infusion into their soul that they'll go and just kill helpless people, women, children, people dancing in a nightclub, unarmed. So... Once that decentralized activation goes, then it's kind of like uh, bees and, or ants with the pheromones, right? It's not like I'm telling a cell in L.A., go do this. Go kill these guys. I'm saying, all right, here's an opportunity. We had this conversation earlier. You talked about it. I came in here and repeated it. Folks are hearing this for the second time. But, but that, that's a good allegory. It's just like the bees with the pheromones. Yeah, it's perfect. You, you definitely hit the nail on the head. They're not uh, coordinated enough. To, they're connected, but not coordinated. You know, they're not, can you do this at this time? Let's sync our watches. Here we go, three, two, one. Act, you know, it's not to that degree of sophistication like, you know, Army special operations. Uh, they wish that they were, but you watch ISIS recruiting videos or their special ops. And, Looks like clowns. Yeah, clowns in black robes. Yeah, that have mental problems. That's <laughs> really it is. That is their level of sophistication. I don't want to make jokes. So about what it. do you expect to happen? I mean, from the intel we're getting... The, they the, they plan to hit s uh, f at least four or five more cities. Yeah, I was here right after Paris, and I said it's gonna ha it's it's getting going. San Bernardino, same thing. I'm like, don't don't stop, don't slow down. It it is. It Two is weeks ago, you said we can pull the video up. You said they're activating the cells. Get ready. Yeah. Why did you say that? Because I, I, mean, I guess you can't tell us. But the, the point is, is that just a hunch or? The I mean, I've, no, it's not a hunch. I can't I can't say you know where I'm getting or who's telling me. Or how I know, but I'm telling you, it's about to get worse. This is not the beginning. This we are we. The, you're the quiet professional, so we, yeah, so we can't yeah, tell you about this. It's, like, <laughs> it's not like they're knocking on the door. They're through the door. We already let them in. I say we. I didn't let them but in. But good people in the government are tracking them, and that's my point earlier. We know the FBI, federal marshals, in, in this case, and San Bernardino, and Major Hassan are all ordered to stand down. Why is Obama ordering them to stand down? He'd be a hero if you let him take them out. What's going on there? So they're being tracked. We know this guy was being tracked in 2013, 2014. We don't know what happened in 2015. He kind of dropped off the radar. Same thing with San Bernardino guys. Like, they were being tracked. And they said, ah, maybe we'll just leave them alone because we don't want to, you know, seem like we're being prejudiced. But the, the dogs are being called off. There are guys in the FBI, in the CIA, in local law enforcement that will go and hook and book these guys because there's enough evidence to say they want to do bad. Are we a nation, though, that just because we think they're going to do something bad, we're going to stop them? Well, so here's the problem. If you pledge allegiance to a foreign power uh, like ISIS, a foreign, so it's its own state, Traitor. and 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 then he, they admit a year and a half ago he pledged allegiance, arrest him right then if you have the proof. Yeah, he's a traitor. That's it. Well, well, I don't he understand. says he's aligned with a foreign power and is intending to go out and, I mean, it's a done deal. In my, in my mind, absolutely. Not only a done deal in the sense that um, he should have cuffs and be sitting in a jail, but... As a soldier, he's an enemy. I'll, I'll bury that guy. Well, that's the problem. His parents were from Afghanistan. He was a citizen. So overall, we know the danger. We, but if we have the proof, I mean, what jury isn't going to evict this guy of conspiracy if he says, I pledge allegiance to ISIS? You just pledge allegiance to a group who says its code is to go and kill everybody. Then his dad says, man, you know, we were walking down the street and he saw him, he, you know, he saw these two guys kiss and, I, I, and he got really mad about it. You know, and maybe that's what set him off. That was a couple of his months. Dad's ago. making excuses. Yeah, he is. Absolutely, he he is. His dad, who's who's a Muslim, you know, let this happen. His dad knew that his son had been radicalized. He knew that his son had pledged himself to ISIS. He knew that his son wanted to hurt gays. Well, let me ask you this then. And then he let it happen. Obviously, the frequency is getting more intense. The amount of people getting killed is more intense. What's the metric here? Just your dead reckoning or, 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 I mean, America needs this warning. What's the intel on how bad this is going to get? Because I'm no rocket scientist. We bring 5 million into Europe, hundreds of thousands in here. They're suppressing the real number because uh, we've gone and documented every school in Austin's got like a, a high school where I went. Anderson's 230 
two people from Syria just this year. Every other high school's hundreds. That's just the high schools. We call the other schools. Yeah, we've got hundreds. They're freaking out. A school of 2,000 has hundreds of, of people from one country there saying take care of them in Arabic. They're telling girls don't wear short skirts. Everybody's freaking out. The number must be giant, Tim. And and, and so I'm saying if 10% are radical, and in, in the polls, 25% say they support suicide bombing. So let's say 25% are radical. Let's say 1% act on that. We're still talking about tens of thousands of combatants here. Yeah. So so what's the metric? I asked that same question two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I said, you know, in my mind, there's very few options. There's get them out, kill them, or convert them. Convert, I'm not saying like they... Can't we just convert them to freedom? What is their problem? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they have to be Christian. I'm saying they cannot be the... the Wherever that line is, what radical extreme Islam is, um, that has to be recognized by the Islam and Muslim community, and that has to be bastardized. It has to be it has to be recognized to be a threat to their I'll say this. I finally saw the National Islamic Council or whatever on TV halfway apologizing, saying this isn't Islam when this is. So I mean they better start really getting their act together. And that half ass apology is that does not keep doing it. When you're saying it's not Islam, you now have to say this has taken over what Islam was. Islam might have been a beautiful religion. It is no longer that. Is sure, it, and I'll take you one further. I'm really angry, and I, and I mean physically angry at the left, saying my guns are to blame, veterans are to blame, gun culture's to blame. It's all over the news. Take my guns and then act like I did something so I could be killed by these radical jihadists you're bringing in? I mean, they just killed 50-plus of your people who I have nothing against, and then you're blaming me. I mean, this is wrong. This is out of control. Get your basic instincts for survival back. Second hour coming up, tons of news. Tim Kennedy with us. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Infowarsstore.com is the Hillary for prison shirts. That criminal's part of Benghazi and back in this whole Islamic invasion. We'll talk about what's happening at the top in 70 seconds. Stay with us. Tim Kennedy, terrorism expert, 15 years special forces, part of some of the most secretive elite units out there. And I obviously can't get into all that, but let me tell you, he's the guy to talk about this. He's the guy to break this down and, and hopefully... As this unfolds the next few days, we can get some intel or even file reports from the road. Uh, we have Joe Biggs. He's on the ground. He's trying to get to the site of the uh, nightclub shooting, 50-plus dead, over 60 wounded. Uh, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Rob News joining us, but you're making other amazing points. Tim, in the last 70 seconds uh, of break, go back to what you were just talking about being in Kuwait uh, 11 days ago. I mean, you're all over the world, and, and what they admit to you, how they export the terror all over the world. It was a basic conversation um, with some of the representatives of the Kuwaiti government that was with us about why there are few instances of terrorism in the Arab Union, you know, countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And uh, flat out, they said, well, when somebody gets radicalized here, we just export them. What do you mean you just export them? You've, you've, you, they're... These are these are Kuwaitis that were raised here in in moderate Muslim, and then they get to a point where really liking religion, but they want to hurt other people that don't like the religion enough. So then you send them somewhere else to go do these dastardly deeds. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, um, it was just commonplace that they just didn't want it to happen in Kuwait. So they have enough money that they just ship them somewhere else. Exactly, which then actually spreads their radical form. Now the dominant form, regardless of Islam to take over the world, and that's why you can Google this, Associated Press, Saudi Arabia has not taken one, quote, Syrian refugee, not one, that's their failed invasion force, where they take their families with them to steal the houses, the swimming pools, and everything else. So they fail, then Turkey brings them in. In fact, we can put that on screen for TV viewers. This is incredible. Tim Kennedy, big picture. Yeah. Why is Obama doing this? I know you work for him. You're still in the military. Uh, why... Why are they doing I mean, I know this is the big debate in the military. I don't know why. I, I, I think this, the simple answer is that when we're all looking at one thing, it makes it so easy to do anything else. Um, so if we're all looking at radical Islam, which we should be because they're killing us and they're destroying our way of life, um, while we do that, it gives them a reason to do all the things that they want to. They try to take our guns. They give us to break into iPhones. And say, oh, the San Bernardino terrorist had an iPhone, so we should be able to have access to all iPhones. And but they ordered the FBI to stand down going after the people. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. So they're going to use this attack. It's like Europe's already done. We know. Yeah. To take the liberties and say, Germans, you can't criticize radical Islam. We're going to arrest you, or Islam, period. 
We're going to fine you. I mean, our reporters have video. People trying to hand out nationalist flyers, mainline stuff against open borders are being fined or arrested in Germany. Well, it's happening here. I, I, have, I have a friend. I'm, I am, it's an ongoing investigation, so I, I don't want to throw him under the bus here. But it's a prior special forces guy that he had... Uh, he, he was a human guy, so he worked human intelligence. He worked informants, and he was told that a mosque here was in Austin. No, no, in in the United States. I'm not going to get specific. Was radicalizing, specifically training and preparing people to go do um, terrorism. So he went to that mosque and confronted them. He is being charged with a hate crime. Wow, so it's happening here, just like it. So talking to a, to a group of a known religion that, that, that's pushing worldwide death. Uh, the attacks on Christians have doubled. The UN admits that. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands killed last year alone. And you go and say, hey, I hear this is going on. And then you get charged with the hate crime for your speech. Yeah. And the, the, this labeling thing that we're doing too, where we're calling it a hate, hate crime or workplace violence, it's all the same damn thing. Oh, I wonder if Obama will call the Orlando shooting workplace violence like he did uh, San Bernardino. Or even if he calls it a hate crime. Because it was it was against gays. It's just anything. But he has gays. now. It's terrorism, and, and Obama's calling it a hate crime. It's the same thing, and he has to. Start, I don't care if you call it workplace violence. It's still terrorism. I don't care. Let it's me ask you this: When we come back from break, Tim Kennedy, and, and, and I want you to think about this. It's a short break. It's a sixty-second break. I want to ask you this question: When we rejoin some stations, what are they going to do when it's not twelve or fourteen or fifteen attacks, but a hundred, two hundred, three hundred? Because we know the metrics, the numbers, it's building towards that. What are they going to do? How are they going to spin that one? I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Stay with us. Look, folks, you can say what you want about the United States Middle East policy. You can say what you want about any of this. There's only one Stone Age region of the world that actually has the power to launch attacks in other nations, and that's the Middle East. And women are property there. It is literal hell on earth. Uh, the few areas that weren't that radical have been invaded, and our government's backing it. Anderson Cooper from the CIA, formerly, would sit there and praise the Arab Spring, you know, kicking out our allies where people can live in peace and, uh, you know, putting in the Muslim Brotherhood, the al Qaeda light. And so our own military the last four years has told Obama we're not going to back ISIS and al Qaeda. I don't care if you change the name in, uh, in Syria. So instead, Saudi Arabia has turned to proxy armies flooding the West. And I believe it's clear the West has done this, that criminals in our own governments NATO and others allied with Saudi Arabia have intentionally brought these people in, they've advertised, and are actually using it as a way to threaten political decapitation in the West. Because even if these are ham-fisted operators, if you activate, let's say conservatively in Europe, 100,000 uh, jihadis, and, and I think out of 5 million, 80% military age men, I think that's a very conservative number. Tim Kennedy's an expert, correct me if I'm wrong, let's just say 100,000. That would be a crippling effect, especially in this culture of just, you know, they're talking about a civil emergency in Florida right now. The governor wants one over 50-something dead. Imagine 10 attacks in your town a week because they got the people. I mean, I go to the domain up here in North Austin. It looks like I'm in Islam Islamabad. I, I, I go to Barton Creek. This is women wearing full burqas. And I'm not kidding, I actually had an anxiety attack about a month ago with my daughters there because they were looking at us weird and there are all these men laughing at me and I turn a corner, there's more and I'm like, and it's just like, it's so alien, folks, to have women as prisoners. But it's, oh, it's trendy in the liberal sites. Oh, here's how you wear a hijab and how you do it. I mean, it's freaking me out. I don't like it. It's clearly a plan to destabilize everything. How do we expose that? That's the question. And then I was asking you a question too before the break uh, and I, Tim Kennedy, I, I forget what it was. What was it? It was some big question about why are they doing it? How big is it going to get? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, the, and the answer is it's going to continue to grow until we as a people grab our balls and do something about it. We, we can't be politically correct. We can't de demonstrate tolerance. We have to, we are at war for our existence right now. When, when you can walk down the street and there's a burkini, which is like a swimsuit that covers somebody from head to toe, um, being sold in downtown Austin so you can go onto the river and enjoy your beautiful Austin weather covered in black garments, um, you're wearing a fight for our life. And so what, what do we need to do? We as a people need to get strong and appreciate that there's now an implied responsibility for us to, we got to be activated. We, ha we have to get turned on. We have to wake up. We have to start training. If somebody's going to walk in and has the ability and the capability to start mowing down 50, now 110 people, is that how many people he shot total? 50 some odd dead, 60 now wounded. 
if there's one person like me there, one person like our friend Shane, one person like my partner Blank from Sheepdog, it would have changed. It, one, it takes one person to change. And tell folks about like Sheepdog that. response. Uh, it's not that it needs to be plugged. You, you, you have w waiting lists to get involved in it. But we were talking about this Friday when you were here about getting back to us being men, being prepared, being involved. That's the answer. So when somebody attacks a nightclub or whatever it is, folks are shooting back. That's the answer is to have a security plan, not to run up a white flag uh, to these people like the left is doing, saying right now, blame the Second Amendment. That's, to me, what is so incredibly outrageous. It's idiotic and moronic. When you look, I, I don't know how many gunfights I've been in, but I, I will tell you that I have watched Al-Qaeda. I've watched Taliban. I've watched ISIS walk into villages, mowing everybody down effortlessly because there's not one person that would stand up to them. But the moment that one person, it takes one, one person, shows resistance and shoots back, it changes the chemistry of everything. Well, look at Benghazi. What was it? At least over 500 groups, seven or eight waves. 500 dudes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, against how many? Ten? Yeah, ten shooters. Ten, it took ten guys to stop up to 500 terrorists, right? So we have one shooter in Orlando, two shooters in San Bernardino. What was it? Eight in Paris? It, it's not that many. It, it just takes one or two dudes with the training and the prepared mind Obviously, the problem is Islam. It's not our Second Amendment. How obvious is that? It, it's our Second Amendment that is going to save us. It's Islam that's trying to kill us. Now, again, I go back to this then. What is the thinking in the military? What is the thinking, uh, again, of good people that want to protect this nation, who, are, who, are, who I know, who are great folks, to then see Obama saying this isn't Islam. Uh, we need to let more people in. He doesn't let the Christians in, though. Even though they're 20% and are trying to get out of Syria, it's less than 1% he lets in. It's 0 0.7. Clearly, they're out to get Christians. What is the thinking? I, I mean, because I get we're supposed to, you know, people in the military like yourself follow orders of the president. But what happens when those orders violate common sense, the Constitution, and, 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 and just basic humanity? There's definitely degrees of frustration and trying to figure out the best solution. Okay, so we know, what, we know what our problem is, right? When we say, oh, we got to... Uh, just like the FBI in San Bernardino. We know that these guys are bad, and we figure out a way to maybe do something about it, but they just couldn't figure out a solution. It's kind of the same with the military right now, where you know they're saying it doesn't matter what the name is of the group in, in, in Syria. We're not going to support them. You can call them ISIL. You can call them ISIS. You can call them al Qaeda. You can call them whatever the hell you want. We're still not going to support them. But here, we're trying to, you know, we're frustrated. The, the military is frustrated. We're trying to find a solution that means that we can still keep our oath, that we can do the right thing, that we can follow orders because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, but most importantly, we can stay true to our morals, our integrity, and our ethics and protect justice and freedom. Um, but it is hard right now. Let me ask you this question, and, 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 and this was the question before the break, the key one that ties us all together. What is the metric if... I mean, how many, from the statistics we know, I mean, many polls, excuse me, about 25% in Europe and here say they sympathize with suicide bombers. Uh, that's just Muslims polled across the board. What are the numbers, or just dead reckoning, a low estimate, how bad are these sleeper cell attacks going to get? Because as you said, it's just as they turn up the heat, as, as ISIS orders the attacks to take place, it happens. The media tries to cover it up. How many attacks will it take until the government, that has brought these people in, in Europe or here, is held accountable. Because here's the thing, Obama, you're not blaming the Second Amendment that our forebears fought for, everybody else fought for, and the First Amendment, and our free open culture that you come in and piss all over. You're not going to sit there and blame what happened in Florida on us. Do you understand, you son of a bitch? And I don't usually talk like that, but it's clear there's about to be a bunch more attacks. And I'm not going to sit here and take the blame for it because the Daily Beast and Media Matters says so. You're declaring war on this country with a bunch of jihadis you brought in. You did it, you son of a bitch. I'm sorry, but that's what it comes down to. And, and, and the games are over. I'm not going to sit here and have my family and this country scapegoated because you're a slime ball that hates this country and is allied with a bunch of people wearing nightgowns. Sorry, go ahead. You said it all. You did. We, we have to start fighting back. We're going to go to Rob Dew after the break, and then Biggs is getting in position there at the nightclub. Uh, other angles to this. I rarely get this mad, folks. I mean, I'm really getting tired of this. I can't. It's a nightmare. It's like logic has been killed, Tim. They have allowed these people in. They're attacking us, and then the news blames us. 
you, you asked how bad is it going to get? It's going to get way, way worse. It is statistically proven as Islam increases percentage-wise in the nation, as does the terrorist attacks. Um, so we, you know, were one, two percent over the past decade. Now we're at three to four percent, and we are on trend. When we reach the eight to nine that we should be at the end of next year, we'll pretty much be tripling the number of terrorist attacks that we had this year. So we had eight this year. That they couldn't sweep under the rug. Yeah, th that we absolutely, without an unequivocal doubt, conclusively know that we can call these terrorist account attacks regardless of what. So what happens by next year? What's the metric? 50. 50 big ones. And then, and then, and then next. 500. Jeez. And the thing is, they laugh two years ago and say, we're going to flood you with migrants. And Merkel goes, ah, ISIS said they were going to flood Europe. I mean, the thing is, they tell us what they're going to do. <laughs> they do it. And they do it. And our president opens the door. Tim Kennedy's our guest. CheapDogResponse.com. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Our reporters from Europe straight ahead. Tim Kennedy's our guest in studio. Soldier, soldier, 15 years special forces in the uh, most elite units out there that deal with anti-terrorism. But he's a busy guy these days. We appreciate him popping in for the info war. Uh, this is cut and dry for me, folks. This is a false flag attack. It's real jihadis. Islam uh, is real. It is attacking. Orthodox Islam is what we're seeing here. Sure, it's, 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 it's the new dominant Islam. It's, it's the old Islam. It's back. Uh, and Tim's right. It's not just radical Islam. That is what is dominating Islam today. And it says it's going to kill everybody that doesn't uh, convert. Uh, and it's bizarre. Uh, it's 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 crazy to see the Second Amendment all over the news, from CNN to even Fox, blaming the Second Amendment. Uh, we see all these training manuals and Homeland Security saying the main threat is veterans and gun owners. When there's no metrics of terrorism from those groups, that's who Homeland Security is geared up against. I think political correctness is bit off more than it can chew trying to make this alliance with Islam, and and the low level folks that want to grovel to it and kiss its butt. They're going to be absolutely attacked because Islam attacks weak targets. I, I mean, it's really clear that these jihadis really are cowards. And, and Tim, personally, he doesn't want to say the numbers, but he's killed hundreds of them himself. Okay, and he can attest to that. And it's very frustrating to me, who doesn't claim that, you know, I'm the toughest guy in the world. But I've never backed down from a fight if, if somebody wants to have one. Uh, but, but I like it to the time I saw this lady, I told the story a hundred times, choking to death in a Madeline restaurant. My son was like a year old. I'd gone to the bathroom. My wife was out there. I come out like two minutes later, everybody's saying, call 911 like parrots, like 50 people around this table. This woman's turning blue on the table. She's dying. I was on a swim team. I, I was taught by the fire department, basic Heimlich maneuver. And I did a Heimlich and she coughed out a big thing of food and she lived. And they thought that was so weird. I mean, like 50 people, and they were like, no, 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 we've called 911. She'd be dead in four minutes. So I just see America dying on the floor here, and they're trying to shove more potatoes down our throat to make us choke. We're going to go to our reporter. Tim Kennedy's going to ride shotgun the rest of the hour. This is just so crazy. Uh, Tim, at the top, I mean, I, 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 don't, I rarely use French and, and get in the president's face, but clearly they hate this country so much they're doing this because it's so dangerous for Obama and the Democrats and others to bring in the Islamicists, let them attack, see the attacks escalating, and then think they're going to spin it and blame the Second Amendment. No, you're not going to do it. Tim Kennedy. I thought it was criminal in, in Benghazi when we left our guys there to die, right? Radical terrorists. Coming. Because the religion of peace was coming. Yeah, religion of peace, but a bunch of radicalized terrorists, Muslims, were coming to kill uh, our ambassador and their people. That that was really, really far away. That's in Benghazi. We're now talking about San Bernardino on the West Coast and Orlando on the East Coast. This is not on the other side of the world. This is here, in our backyard, at our pool party. They're murdering us. And they're, they're murdering our weak. They're going to unarmed women, children, places that you're not allowed to have guns, bars, gay nightclubs. You know, and, and, and what's infuriating is that... Not only are they then spinning it and blaming, you know, this guy was, had easy access to a gun. Yeah, but he was in a gun-free zone. The thing and he got a license. <laughs> he was in a gun-free zone, and the only thing that stopped him were other men with guns. Now, you know, the, I see all these people now with the gay pride flags on their Facebook pages. Um, it doesn't matter what the group was. It doesn't matter if they're gay. They were. It's, it's horrific that they were targeted. They were Americans. Those were Americans killed on American soil. By a coward. By a coward. By 
a terrorist on our soil in an act of war. We've been, we are at war with terrorism and we have been for 15 years. Well, if I was at war with the government, and, and I'm, this is hypothetical, I'm not thinking this before they put me in a file, Obama does, I would go after who I thought did it. Like, I would go after soldiers, I would go after politicians, I would go after hard targets, because that's what a man does. Yeah. I would attack the fighters. Yeah, no. I wouldn't attack the women and children. Not them. They don't, they don't have the balls to do that. Uh, they also don't have the intelligence to pull off sophisticated attack. They did it once, 9-11, um, you know, but they had lots of funding resources. A lot of doors like, were opened. Yes, for them. Uh, now they, they have to decentralize, execute at the, their easy, at, the, at their convenience. Um, and that's going to be the unarmed. That's going to be the women, the children, the journalists, gay nightclubs, um, soft, easy targets. That is such a cowardly target. They know there's no guns allowed with liquors being served, and they pick a bunch of gay people to go kill. Yeah. <laughs> the, the groups they know aren't going to have guns. You, you can't why why has the media it. told gays you're supposed to talk with a lisp and have a gun and be a wimp? I mean, why have they told you this is your identity? Why? It's like feminists. Don't have guns, women. That's how women are empowered is having guns and knowing how to fight. Yeah, I'm begging the LGBT community right now. Look, call me. Get my email. Go to, go to InfoWars. Get in contact with me. Let me give you tools to save your Give them your, your Twitter. Give them your Facebook. Give them your sheepdog they response. The They're gonna, they are, you don't get this. They are coming to kill you. The, that religion does not want you to exist. That's the first group they target in the Middle East. Don't you get it? They throw you off roofs. They throw you off cliffs. They shoot you in nightclubs. They're going to burn you alive. They're going to hand you. Their Bible tells them to stone you to death. And they follow it. Fight for your life. Okay? You cannot. You cannot. I don't. I get it. But that here's the deal. Fun. Don't blame us. Don't no. blame Don't blame gun owners and myself. I mean, we didn't do this. My arms are wide open saying, I will give you every resource I have to save your life, but you got to come to me. you got to come to us. This community, the right, the patriots want you to live. You're an American just like me. Don't die unarmed and helpless in a nightclub. And sure as hell, don't worship, you know, like a, it's Stockholm Syndrome. I predict, though, they're going to worship the Muslims now. It's going to be a big kumbaya with prayers, circles, and we, we, I mean, all, all, all this garbage. We, we know that to tolerance is really well respected um, by the Muslim community. They're like... No, what happens is the most radical for over a thousand years compete with each other to take over society and enslave and henpeck and boss everybody around because it's a freaking cult. When, when they see tolerance, when they see... Just like you're saying, the Stockholm Syndrome, if the LGBT community then says with open arms, hey, we love you, we forgive you, we support you, they view that as weakness. They don't view that as kindness and strength. That's weakness, and they'll continue to murder you at their convenience and their leisure, and they're going to do it all the damn time. We're going to go to break here in a moment and come back with Rob Dew, who is in Dresden, Germany. Or he, he, I think he may have gone to Prague now. He got incredible footage of General Petraeus at Bilderberg. He walks up, and Petraeus runs from him. And I'm not attacking Petraeus. I think it was wrong that he got in trouble and Hillary didn't. But the point is, that's how scared he is talking about the secret meaning he runs. Then Peter Thiel, a multi-billionaire that founded PayPal and a bunch of other stuff, he actually talks about Bilderberg for the first time ever. And, and again, this is the group pushing for one world government, what's allied with radical Islam. Uh, this is the enemy, folks. I don't mean you're all bad if you go to Bilderberg, but it's the folks that set up the EU, the Global Government Project, all of it. Uh, do uh, you're over there to cover. These are the folks that open the door to Europe. What's coming up after the break, Rob, dude? Well, I think we can talk about a lot of things. Uh, chasing down General Petraeus, who didn't want to talk about Hillary's email scandal. Uh, Peter Thiel actually confronted James A. Johnson here at the of the uh, of the festivities at Bilderberg. But right now, Alex, I just want to show you, here's what's looking at, at like in Prague in the old town square. Uh, we are live in Prague, Czech Republic right now. It's about an hour and a half from Dresden. This is where we're flying out tomorrow. A bit of a cheaper ticket, but this is the old town square. Amazing place. A lot of these people built this stuff to last. There's a celestial clock just around the corner. Well, they also built it to withstand Islamic invasion. Years. They also built it to withstand Islamic invasion. They were bad. They should have just opened up, given their daughters over, and we could all be living in mud huts right now. How dare them build those cathedrals? You know, that's, you know, the big uh, mosque, the, the, the blue mosque there in the Turkey, in Istanbul, Constantinople. By the way, the incredible video is up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. It's just over the top. It was linked on DrudgeReport.com over the weekend. Then it got overshadowed, unfortunately, by the tragic events in Orlando. 50-plus dead, 60-plus wounded. Tim Kennedy, terrorism expert, uh, current uh, Special Forces uh, operator. And, of course, we have Rob Dew uh, there in Germany. Uh, Paul Watson and others, uh, they've done a great job. We sent them there to show the shadow government Bilderberg group openly 
opening the borders, advertising for military aged men to come in, allowing them to attack, and then declaring civil emergencies and arresting Germans uh, and others that criticize it. The only country not going along with this is, to a certain extent, Switzerland. And now the UK is trying to leave. The Euro, they never, they never even voted to be in. So I was just talking to Tim Kennedy during the break, and, and I'm going to play this Petraeus clip. Rob Dube, why do you, what do you think the play is, the end game? Uh, I mean, logic must be suspended, or the West, the governments will get in trouble for doing this destabilization. But if they can just blame our free speech or our guns, they win. And, and so I guess they think we're that dumb, they're going to pass all these hate speech laws, get rid of free speech in Europe and the United States, on the backs of the radical, crazy people they brought in. Uh, Rob Dew, what do you think is happening? Well, I'll tell you what, Alex, the people I've met in uh, Dresden, Germany, uh, about half of them agree with the micro policy. They think it's great. They think they can take as many migrants as they want, which I don't understand. So they're suicidal, they brainwashed the liberals. They're just, they, exactly. they just are committing suicide. They are. And they don't, they don't realize that. They say, oh, you're wrong. You know, you know, we tell them, hey, most of the crimes are committed by migrants. Oh, that's fake. Well, it's from the German government. How fake can it be? So you're dealing with that type of uh, dichotomy. And then, and then you the almost got problem. robbed last week on video at the train station with them jumping around you and looking they like. They were everywhere. Yeah. No, they were drunk. There were kids coming up. They're from Algeria. It, it's crazy what's going on in Europe. And they've brainwashed half the population, at least, maybe even more, to believe that the migrant. The migrant uh, solution by bringing more people in is good. And they've been told, you know, with Peter Sutherland and others that there is no borders. We're just going to have open borders and migrants can come freely. But they don't want to assimilate. They don't want to. You interviewed that guy that said, I want the free money, but I hate the Germans and we're going to take over. And he's literally like a exactly. cartoon character from Bugs Bunny going, I take over my country, your women, mine. <laughs> yeah. it's gonna, the liberal's like, oh, we love you, oh, hi. Huffington Post. Here's how to wear a hot jib. It's so sexy if you're liberal. Wear one to make the and, Muslims more and comfortable. Hey. And, hey, have sex with Muslims because now we got to bring them in and have sex with them. And oh, have, yeah, the and German have, government uh, came out and said, have sex. Yeah. Hitler told the German women have sex with the soldiers, have more kids, which made sense. They were killing all everybody. You know, the, 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 they had to reproduce for all the soldiers that were dead. I'm not defending Hitler. That's just a fact. But instead, now the they're telling you. You heard this? Yeah. The German government says have sex with Muslim yeah. men. Uh, Tim Kennedy. Yeah, yeah it's prima nocta. It's, it's not like a new thing. You know, the, the British did it with the Irish and the Scottish. Um it's uh, when you're trying to. If we can't defeat them, we'll just breed them out. Ah, it's a great plan. But first, you got to take their guns, and uh, and then you're absolutely right. That there's no such thing as assimilation when it comes to Sharia law. There's one solution, and that is the complete annihilation of anything that does not subscribe to your theology. So it's the Borg. You will assimilate. Yeah, or you'll die, or we'll kill you, we'll burn you, we'll drown you, we'll throw you off cliffs, we'll behead you, we'll do anything. If you don't assimilate. The, this isn't a culture that ever put up with anybody having any free will. Yeah. It's totally monotheistic dictatorship run by men. And the, and, and the cuckled Gloria Steinem's love it. The, you, it. It blows my mind that, you know, I was just in Berlin and um, I was wearing a shirt that had uh, the noon, the letter N in Arabic on it, which is being painted on Christian and Jews doors that ISIS is going to target. I was wearing the shirt intentionally because I just want to see what reaction I would get. Within minutes of walking down the street of Berlin, I had groups of Middle Eastern men that were kind of following me around. Oh, I wish I could have. That was, that's what happened to my crew. They follow you around. In fact, yeah. you saw that last night. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. yeah I, I saw the exact same thing here in Austin, Texas. Not in Berlin, not in Syria, not in Iraq. I saw it here in Austin. The rot rally is going on. It's a big uh, motorcycle rally. And there are a lot of motorcycle clubs have veterans in them. And they wear the patches that say what units that they were in. They were in the Marines or they were in the Army, 101st Division. Uh, they deployed to Iraq. They deployed to Afghanistan. Well, these groups of Middle, Middle Easterners here in Austin, Texas, were kind of posturing and following these veteran groups around, passive aggressively kind of trying to intimidate these guys, letting them know, hey, we know, we know that you guys went and killed some of our friends, but it's not going to happen anymore because we're here now. And that's like, eh. I mean, shaved heads, beards, white shirts, their, their wives or girlfriends or whoever were with them in their burkas just uh, about a block away, could see them and I could saw that they're together because they're looking. But uh, Oh my God, they were showing off to them. Yep, downtown Austin. Like a gang. Look at this, ladies. I'm going to creep up to some veterans who don't even know what's going on. Yeah. I guess it was like 1980 in L.A. and it was the Bloods and the Crips. Like, ah, oh, no, no, no. Look, I'm I'm here. Like, oh. Can I show folks the photo you sent me about a week ago? Uh, which one? The, the, <laughs> the domain? Yeah. 
Here, here, is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Here, document cam shot for TV viewers. This is exactly what I saw at the Domain a few weeks ago, and I also saw this at Barton Creek, where I've been going since I was a little kid when I visit my grandparents. And, folks, the thing is, they're, they're, you know, they're wearing burkas, they're wearing hijabs, they're bugging their eyes out at you. They're literally setting up and having picnics out there, just like it's the Middle East or whatever, at the middle of the mall. And I'm nothing against these poor people other than the fact that they literally are in a cult and think I should submit. And this is just everywhere. Yeah, look at the age. So the significance of this picture, not, not that I was downtown Austin at a really swanky um, outdoor mall type place, the age of them. Right, they're all somewhere between their twenties and thirties. That, that, that is prime fighting age. Where are their husbands? Did anybody see them? No. Nobody I was about to say that's what happened. I'd turn one corner and the women all have to wait. They're not allowed to even walk around. And then I'd see the groups of men. They've all kind of adopted kind of gangster culture, like a weird mutation. So this guy's going, yeah, blah, blah. and then meanwhile the women are all over here, and it's just like, what the hell? Yeah, we we have to start understanding. You know, it's, it's, it is a unique culture. They do things differently. They speak differently. Um, when I say they speak, they're speaking English oftentimes now, um, but they communicate in ways that, uh, you know, j just like the Abonics in 1980s of the Bloods and the Crips, unless you're part of the gang task force, you couldn't understand what they were talking about. So what was the point? This stalking the veterans at the Rot Rally, was this just counting coups, showing off of the ladies? I, it was one of two things. It was either to try to test resolve you know, if you posture and to see what a response is, and maybe even had something kicked off, uh, had their, their their women video it. And the point is, I've lived here my whole life. There's like Muslims everywhere now in full outfits. Uh, in Austin, the center of central Texas. And, 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 and I've read phase two, once their numbers get high enough, then they all start wearing it. They're getting us ready. Uh, and uh, once, <laughs> once we don't submit, once we don't assil assimilate, they kill us. So, so did, did, I mean, did these vets notice what was happening to them? Uh, the vets were, they're enjoying the rot rally. They're drinking. I don't drink ever in public. Um, I'm always armed. And, uh, you know, and you're not supposed to drink when you're carrying. So, uh, you know, I was just watching these guys from behind as they were posturing against these vets. And I was like, I'm, I'll shoot these guys in the back if this actually kicks off. You know, um, not in a fight. Like if they have weapons, weapons, yeah, something pulls something out, they're going to get buried right there. Uh, the veterans were just kind of trying to enjoy themselves. They're just like, hey, we're, we're downtown Austin on 6th Street, you know, with our motorcycles, having a great time. As what were they, you down there for, a movie premiere or something? Uh, another TV show that's going to be coming out, and I was, just, I was promoting it. Man, you are so busy. Yeah. I love the fact you work even more than I do. Most people look at me, sometimes I work like 18 hours a day. They're like, why do you do this? It's like, I can't help it. It's like, there's so much stuff to cover and do. Uh, Rob, dude, we're going to break in a moment. All I can say is get ready for a big bonus. I hope people buy some products at InfoWarsStore.com so I can afford it. We've got uh, a lot of new products out there uh, at InfoWarsLife.com that fund the whole operation. But Living Defense only came in once back during December. and was so popular, it's Parasite Cleanse, uh, that it sold out in two days. We ordered three times the number. It took us six months to get it because it's got 27 ingredients. And to pass California standards to be totally clean, it's hard to get those 27 ingredients and have them be totally organic. Well, we finally got it together. We have uh, a, a supply of this, but it's selling out in the next few days. It's 120 capsules, and we're discounting at 25% off, even though it's selling out, because I want you to take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com, and that helps us fund this operation, sending our crew all over the world. We'll be right back with Rob Dude, Joe Biggs, and Tim Kennedy. I'm Alex Jones. Wow, a lot of crazy stuff going on here behind the scenes. Uh, our reporter has gotten to the nightclub, the scene of where 50-plus people were killed. At the gay nightclub, I'm just busy looking at news headlines blaming the Patriot community and the, the Second Amendment. Well, wow, we all did this. Like if a criminal runs over somebody with a car, you know, I guess it's, it's all car drivers' faults. Uh, Tim Kennedy is our guest, uh, special forces veteran expert on terrorism. Rob Dew, we've lost his connection. We're going to uh, be having Joe Biggs pop in from uh, the site of this attack. And, and, and again, even the FBI is on the news saying they're expecting more attacks, that this is part of these 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 radicalized groups out there taking action. Uh, other points we haven't made uh, while we're getting uh, Joe Biggs on the line. Other points, Tim Kennedy, that you'd like to relay to folks. I appreciate you coming in on short notice uh, on Sunday. So when when you first when a terrorist attack first goes down, or I go overseas and I take down a target, the the information what we call BIT battlefield integration techniques. Um, it's the most important bit of information. Um, that you're going to get, you know, like in a in a kidnapping, the, those first few minutes, so vital. 
Um, so right now, what the FBI and the CIA is doing, um, they're scrubbing his phone. He died, unfortunately, so we can't interrogate him. They're going to his family. They're going to his friends. They're going to every single person he's talked to in the past five, six days, his Twitter feed, his Facebook feed. And those are live, um, active investigations, right? Every single one of those, you can like think of it like a, like a threat of a virus, like a if, those, if they're weeds and the seeds had just pollinated and they're flying, um, they're trying to catch every single one of those because there are little bits of information that could potentially save other American lives. And we know for a fact that if there's one, they can't do it alone. The lone wolf thing, I, I don't believe in it. I don't think it's true. I believe that they're, they are segregated, that they are organized cellularly. But that does not mean that they're lone wolf because they're so they're support groups. Yeah, like their 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 um, imams are encouraging them. They're even connecting them with other people, showing them how to purchase a weapon legally, how to get a license, how to get money from the government, how to say the right things at the right time to the right people, so that they can stay kind of off the radar. Um, and then we have this imam right there in Orlando saying the very things we saw just happen. I wonder if he's getting investigated, or maybe maybe Obama will have him to the White House. Yeah, listen. This in, we say investigated, there's one way that you talk to this guy. That is, he's bent over a sink with a towel over his head, and you're pouring water on his face and beating him. He just encouraged radical, radicalized Muslims to kill gays, to kill Americans on American soil. He's a terrorist. He's part of the problem. He's fighting a war, and he's one of the warriors. Interrogate him. Well, here's the bottom line. Uh... Donald Trump comes out and says that and gets attacked, but he said there will be more Brussels, there will be more San Bernardinos. In fact, can you guys queue up one of those? And, and they're already in the media attacking him where somebody congratulated him for being right. He said, well, thanks for the congratulation, as if he's congratulating the attack. No, he's saying, thanks for saying I'm right. But, I mean, all he's saying is common sense. Uh, um, definitely not the best tact in how he speaks, but Donald Trump always speaks the same way. But what he said was right. It's the same thing that you said. It's the same thing that I said, that there were going to be more attacks. And they're going to be more vicious. They're going to be more violent. They're going to be more lethal. And, uh, and I'm saying it again today, that there are going to be more attacks. And if we don't do something, there more people are going to die. I've had different doctorates and folks on that are experts on Islam and its whole history. And they said that there's a metric that once they get to like 5%, 10%, it varies in the country. That then there's a confidence level. You're not going to be able to kick us all out. Yeah. And all of our liberal behavior apologizing encourages now Folks who say, okay, it's now time for us to activate and start the attacks. Yeah, we, we last year were right at that, um, the ratio, the percentage of, you know, like that three to 4%. We're somewhere between that five to 10% this year. Um, that, that, that is fearless. That is go start killing Americans. Anybody that doesn't agree with you, that's Americans. So. And then they hope there's attacks on other Muslims back because then that will spur the radicalization of the other Muslims and then the, and then the full jihad's on. Yeah, full jihad is on. It's on right now. So, so I mean, they're looking for a fiery conflagration allied with the left and the George Soros crowds. Joe Biggs is out in front of the nightclub where 50-plus people were killed last night. Joe Biggs, uh, great job getting up early this morning from Texas and getting on all those flights out there. You're now in the rain. Joe Biggs. Roger that. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, we just arrived in Orlando, and as you can see, there's a lot of police vehicles right here in the center of the road. The nightclub's actually right down to maybe about 50-so yards from us at this point in time. You know, what we're seeing right now so far, is, as I'm reading through articles on the flight here, is everyone's wanting to attack the Second Amendment. What happens, though, if we take those guns away? What's going to happen? These guys are going to build bombs. I that can't believe already... we even have to argue with these people. But, Stop but attacking a, American freedom. had a vest on. Guess what? If he would have had a bomb and it would have went off, that would have been way more people, like 200 people. Instead, I'm sitting here driving through Orlando, listening to everyone apologize how we need to not blame uh, Muslims for this. We don't need to blame. Sure, Pulse was a gun-free zone. Scared. Pulse we're was too, a gun-free zone. We're too scared to call this what it is, radical Islam. We have a problem. The borders are wide open. We have a president that could care less about the American people. Christianity is being attacked. American values are being attacked. Men in America are being attacked. And we're allowing these terrorists to come in here. And now we have sleeper cells starting to wake up. They're being activated. We almost had another attack, a large one in L.A. at another gay pride parade today as well. So this is going to continue happening. I heard some of the things Tim said earlier before I got on the flight to leave Austin to come here. And he said he believes it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I do agree with that from the things I've seen and how these people are because we don't have secure borders. Sure. And, 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 and by the way, Rob Jacobson's there running camera doing a great job as well. Rob, feel free to pan around, zoom in while Joe's talking for TV viewers. Radio listeners, go to Infowars.com forward slash show. 
Sure, great job, guys. Yeah, just show more what we got on the street. Pan around. Let's try to zoom in on the nightclub. Please continue and, and, and jump in with any questions, Tim. I, I think a key point that, uh, that Biggs just brought up, both the, both the guy in Orlando and the guy in Los Angeles, they both had bombs. Those were not guns that they bought. They had bombs, both of which would have been more lethal than the guns that they had. The guns were a secondary plan. And they're both, and, and they're both also, I think you guys can probably go through the line and go on to the media. Uh, also, because uh, you're press, uh, also, we have to expand on this, Joe. These people are registered Democrats. These are liberals. These are people that are allied with Islam. So these guys are liberals as well. They're Democrats. And, and then they strike at their very bosom of the people that are trying to aid them and help them, showing the cowardice, uh, Tim. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so despicable. Like, you can't even process. Like, so they killed the unarmed um, people at the nightclub that were primarily gay that have been trying to support them for the past three, four years and facilitate their movement as immigrants here and saying, hey, we have we have like fights here. You know, we have similar causes. We're both prejudiced. We're both and they stabbed neighbors. him in the back. Joe Biggs, I hear you trying to jump right. in. Great point, Tim. And by the way, breaking news, uh, just what Tim was telling, uh, what we were talking about earlier from my source that Tim was confirming, uh, eight people on a ISIS Orlando kill list. Uh, and of course, the FBI has told you you're on that uh, kill list. Uh, Joe Biggs, please continue. Well, one of the interesting things is we're, we're being told continuously that this is a religion of peace. So we need to be uh, understanding of what's going on, that we should, in fact, uh, apologize because this attack is our fault. Because these guys have to grow up in such a hateful environment because Islamophobia exists, and that's why this happened. No, this guy hated homosexuals. The entire religion hates homosexuals. And guess what happened? This guy saw two guys kiss, it flipped his lid, and he went out and carried this out. He took advantage of the fact that he had the security clearance. He went and got guns. And like you said, if that bomb would have went off, it would have been 10 times worse. And they would have still gone, the whole left would have been like, well, you know, we, we need to be more progressive. We, we shouldn't blame them. And then they bring some. Sure, that's his dad's it. cover story. He knows the whole deal. The guy pledged allegiance the, the to ISIS. Dad, the dad is to blame. The dad should be held accountable for his son's actions because he knew what the hell was going on. That guy knew that his son was radicalized. I said the Much same like thing. like the father in San Bernardino. Just like the father. And I'll tell you who else, Obama the and the, the Democrats thing. letting these people in and the Republican leadership doing it too. Uh, what's going to happen when there's hundreds of attacks, Tim and uh, Joe? They're not going to be able to spin this forever. So we, we see a reoccurring theme here, right? We have we have we have two shooters, two different instances, both West Coast, East Coast, both on hit on hit on not hit lists. Uh, I wish um, both on lists from the CIA and the FBI as being cause for concern, right? But the, years later, now two years later, they were able to execute their plan and then kill America. Sure, just like Major Hassan, Joe, you're doing a great job. File more reports. We'll put them to Infowars.com. Everything we're doing is going viral right now, but report there from the nightclub. We're out of time. Thank you so much, Joe, and, of course, uh, Rob Jacobson. Any other points in the 30 seconds we have left? Uh, just the fact that we need to open up and call this what it is. You know, this is radical Islam. People need to be vigilant. People need to watch your backs. Just because you, you watch these interviews, everyone goes, well, he seemed like such a nice guy. Well, they all do until something happens. There's a war going on right now. These guys are activated, and we need to be on alert. Absolutely. Well, great job. Get in there with the reporters. Find out what you can. We'll look for those reports at Infowars.com as you guys upload them. Thank you so much. And stay there uh, You know, at least till Tuesday so we get more intel tomorrow. And uh, there's other folks I know uh, from the crew that are going to be getting out there to Florida. So hopefully hook up with them. Uh, Joe Biggs, I'll talk to you after the broadcast. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Tim Kennedy, thanks for coming and spending part of your Sunday night with us. And we'll be covering it all tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central at InfoWars.com for the big weekday show. There's so much more. We'll break it all down. Great job, the crew. Thank you, Tim.